Um, thank you, Jan Philipp. And um, yeah, um, Jan Philipp outlined um, the possibility to, to um, participate um, via the REF tool, but of course we have also other contact points in our consortium with the Italian partners, um, Sara and Andrea. They, they had uh, a different um, surrounding, which um, Andrea will present uh, later on or give a, a short introduction, and um, also the um, Latin American partners have their own own scheme but um, the, the idea of our cooperation was um, de um, definitely to, to adjust um, the, um, the market studies and uh, to align all the questions so that we combine um, the, the data and um, what I would like to present um, this uh, yeah, this time um, today is uh, a consolidated database which we have elaborated uh, within the last three years. So it's not just uh, last last year, 2023, 20, uh, but um, all the three um, the market studies covering 843 hubs uh, in total today. And um, each hub is, of course, only um, represented once in uh, in the following um, um, analysis. And in overall, we are covering 51 um, countries worldwide. Um, the the teardrop or the, the figures in the tier uh, uh, teardrops um, they represent the sample size. This might di uh, differ quite a lot, and this is a topic which I will refer quite often or uh, various times in in, in uh, my presentation, since the data. Prov provision and the data com um, completeness is very different. Um, we have mandatory data which we ask so that we actually can calculate uh, in an ISO compliant manner the carbon footprint but of course due to our um, research ideas and tasks um, we also asked different um, and further questions. Some of them were mandatory, some of them were optional so this might be different. So the logistical area we asked for, especially for the real estates, um, here we have uh, more than 15 uh, million square meters now covered by um, the database. Um, the real estates uh, represent more than 5 billion tons uh, throughput and the terminals um, yeah, cover 2.4 billion tons um, outbound. Um, you can see um, the, the map of um, the countries covered. Um, yeah, the, the, the countries are uh, listed. Uh, we still have a large focus um, on, on Europe, but um, still I think it is a very interesting picture covering so different countries and having still the same, yeah, the same approach um, worldwide. Um, on the right hand side, you see the um, actually six different site types which we are covering with our um, our database. We provide further uh, questionnaires, but they haven't been involved so far. We have a lot of real estates covering um, yeah sites offering mainly uh, storage. We um, call them warehouses. Uh, some have um, the service both storage and transshipment, uh, and some focus very much only on transshipment. Um, then we have liquid bike terminals and we have uh, still a few but uh, five container to terminals and one roll on roll off terminal um, we have yeah as said uh, in total 800 more than 800 um, sites and for about 500 sites we actually could um, calculate an ISO compliant carbon footprint so all the resources required and requested by the by the ISO um, have been provided the data the annual resource consumption um, but nevertheless there have been uh, quite a few um, sites that couldn't provide today um, all the resources uh, and the consumption required. Um, so um, there we refer to a partial carbon footprint. We will uh, include them or we have included them in our overall analysis, but um, we focus today on especially those sites provided us the possibility to um, calculate a full carbon footprint. And when we want to um, elaborate um, greenhouse gas emission intensity values is uh, one objective of our study. Um, we yeah, have um, the, faced the challenge that many sites couldn't provide the throughput in tons. So um, here we have a split in, uh, yeah, we could, uh, could calculate uh, about 230 um, um, for 230 sites actually the carbon footprint um, per ton uh, the emission intensity value per ton uh, we have um, more sites that could provide us the square meters so we have further um, KPIs um, that um, yeah that um, provide 
um, this perspective. And if we then want to go to actually a more detailed um, yeah, site type specific or even site type and temperature level specific KPIs, yeah, the more detailed uh, we, we get, the smaller the sample size um, becomes. Uh, and that's why we definitely uh, still say, even after three years, we will continue with our market studies. There is still um, a lot of work to be done. And uh, we, we aim at uh, yeah, continuing the market studies and aim at a larger database. And whoever joins us with one site or with 100 sites, everybody, every company is, um, is welcome um, to join this activity so that we can enhance this, uh, this research and uh, fill data gaps we still face. Um, and yeah, what, what data is available and yeah, where do data gaps exist to, to be able um, at an operator perspective um, to, to pr yeah, be able to calculate the full carbon footprint according to the ISO. Um, yeah, some couldn't provide us the electricity um, actually, um, but um, larger data gaps actually um, refer to yeah, the annual heating energy use, um, other energy carriers that are relevant for, for example, um, yard logistics or material handling in general. Um, and also the refill of refrigerants, especially when we have con temperature control sites, um, they, they, they um, are covered by the ISO and um, have their share for greenhouse gas emissions. And there is um, still a data gap um, we face. Transport packaging, um, we have uh, a larger data gap, um, but this is uh, also due to the fact that this was an optional question. Is this an optional scope of the ISO? Um, some companies could provide this, um, but um, yeah, we, we didn't further um, elaborate it um, um, concerning the KPIs, um, this, this topic. Um, regarding the electricity consumption, we can say that, or we have learned that uh, about 60% actually of the, um, of the sites use a national electricity mix. 32% of the sites um, specify that they use to some extent a green tariff. Um, we have asked some of them, or we have asked all of them, if they could um, specify also the um, yeah, underlying energy um, electricity mix or the underlying um, Car, um, emission factors, but uh, a lot um, couldn't, couldn't provide this. Um, regarding heating energy, mainly natural gas is used. 83% of the hubs specify this. And uh, for other energy carriers, um, especially diesel or bio, a blend of diesel and biodiesel has been used. And the listed uh, refrigerants, I don't want to read. Um, there are some specific types and um, yeah, they are listed here. Um, we have summed up um, all real estates. Uh, this is uh, the focus on the real estates, so the warehouses and transshipment sites, not the terminals, and calculated the overall carbon footprint of all these 439 sites. And um, we wanted to see um, what, yeah, where the, the sources or the greenhouse gas emissions come from and to which share. And we can say that 90% of the greenhouse gas emissions actually come from the use of energy, 67 due to ele electricity, 22 heating, and 1% uh, just for um, regarding the um, other um, energy like material handling. Um, here we have to say that um, the ISO requires the national mix, uh, ele national electricity mix, so the so called location based for calculating an ISO compliant. Um, Calm footprint. Um, this has been used. We have learned that 60% actually of the sites use a national electricity mix. But nevertheless, um, if we calculated um, the, the, the company specific electricity mix, the shares might um, differ, of course. Um, but we can see on the right hand side the country mixes uh, who um, are providing this chart. So there's a lot of um, European based um, sites. Uh, and this is, of course, also uh, um, influencing the overall shares, um, especially for electricity. Um, we calculated that 4% of the site carbon emissions come uh, re relate to refrigerant leakage. And we have an additional 6% due to transport packaging. Um, since electricity is um, such a major influencer, we, we have um, dived a little bit deeper. And 
asked um, to allocate the electricity consumption to predefined um, activity clusters. 25% of the hubs could do so. Um, they represent 43% of the total electricity consumption of the, of the study. And 70% of these real estates actually outlined that they do not have any transparency on, on the detailed electricity use. So they couldn't allocate what they use the electricity for, which is, I think is a very important message when we talk about possibilities and, and um, estimating the potentials of um, energy efficiency uh, measures um, to be implemented or to, to be invested. Um, yeah, almost 80% of the electricity consumption by these um, um, enabled hubs um, was allocated and this has been um, outlined here once for all the hubs, but also related to, to the um, different temperature level. So, um, of course, those who have um, a higher or a temperature related temperature control of goods like the cooled or frozen or the those with multiple temperature areas, they have a larger share for electricity use in this field. Um, but we see also there is a, um, yeah, a larger share for lighting indoors and material handling. Overall, we have kind of 32 for temperature control, 27 for lighting indoors and 18% for the material handling. Um, I've used the donut chart before and now uh, provide this as a stack column because we would like to use what we've learned um, of, from the allocation of the electricity to further understand the, the sources of emissions. So we use this, uh, these shares uh, which I've just presented for electricity and um, combine both charts to have an overall um, yeah, allocation of this greenhouse gas uh, emission drivers. And um, so we can now say still 22 is um, regarding to, to heating, um, but 25% is related to um, yeah, resource consumption and leakage of refrigerants um, yeah, for, for temperature control, 18% lighting, and 13% overall for material handling, where most of it comes from electricity and still the 16% we couldn't allocate for, so far. Um, the idea um, introduced already in the beginning was also to elaborate emission intensity values um, for logistics hubs. Um, this is required to use, um, for example, in the ISO for transport chain calculations. Um, we, we are very familiar with uh, yeah, transport chain calculations for transport, where we have emissions per ton kilometer for the different types of um, yeah, modes or, or um, vehicles. For hubs, there's a, there has been a data gap, which we try to, to fill a little bit. Um, as said before, work is still in progress. And this, these are initial figures, uh, which I don't want to go in, into detail um, today, but um, yeah, we, we need to outline that the um, sample size is, is still small. We are working on it to, to get, uh, get it larger. But nevertheless, we think it is worth presenting them and using them if needed, for example, as a default value if companies do not have any primary data so that at, they at least could use uh, such data for assumptions of the to um, a whole transport chain. Um, we have transport, um, transferred um, the information, either the emission, uh, the, these emission intensity values or underlying um, KPIs um, in other tools like EcoTransit, um, the GLAC framework is using and referring to um, this table in its new version and hopefully um, the uh, database in, uh, in, yeah, improves in the coming years so, this, um, so that these um, KPIs actually can be a benchmark for those who are calculating um, their own data. So and any participant of the study can actually um, get their own uh, KPI for um, like ambient um, transshipment sites and then they can compare it to, to this overall average we have elaborated in, this, in the study. Um, this is a KPI per ton. Um, the same 
oh, voila, the same have we, uh, we have done um, for the square meters. Um, as said in the beginning, um, far more companies were able to, to provide um, a logistic area than the throughput. So the database is a little bit better. And um, yeah, this uh, might help to, to also um, you, be used as a benchmark or to, to use as ex, um, default value for extrapolating um, your own emission data. Yes, why uh, participating in the market study? Of course, um, we, we are happy uh, any of uh, yeah, any industry partner supporting our, our resource. Uh, research. We have um, now the ISO, uh, which has been published in March. Um, so everybody who um, part, participates in, in this um, market study receives their own uh, KPI, which is actually um, yeah, a KPI for one hub. hub. And um, those who are familiar with the ISO, um, this can be used as a KPI for the hub operation category. Um, the the REF tool also provides uh, further possibilities um, that, for example, we can elaborate um, yeah, an average emission intensity values covering uh, multiple hubs, which is an option for, for, uh, from the, the ISO as well, um, so that um, we have a representative value of a whole network of a company, for example, and not just um, sim uh, single values for each hub. What we can also um, support companies in is to um, allocate emission, um, emissions to uh, the activity le level. Sometimes we need to, um, or the, the ISO requires the elaboration of two KPIs per hub. So this is um, possible also if, if um, you are um, collecting the data according to the market studies and the service we have elaborated. And um, of course, the yeah, I, I said that um, we have also partial emissions and partial carbon, carbon footprints. So the sample size overall is quite huge, and we are con um, confident that we can use the overall database um, using yeah area or activity cluster uh, specific um, KPIs, so that data um, data gaps can be covered and and filled. For for example, if a company has their the electricity consumption and the fuels consumption, but perhaps missing uh, heating um, information or the leakage of refrigerants. So due, um, on the basis of our, um, the database, we, are, um, we believe that uh, we can support with the research also filling data gaps uh, in this context. So um, yeah, we would like to continue with the market studies as said, and it would be great if um, yeah, we receive further uh, support or continuous uh, support. Uh, we are very happy about what we've done so so far and reached so far, but um, yeah, we will continue and um, I hope to see some of you um, again to, to discuss further these details. And um, this is so far from, from my side. Um, Jan Philb, I don't know whether we have time or uh, it's reasonable to have some questions answered already or will I go hand over directly to Andrea? I think we have time for one question. Um, there was one question concerning, I think, the ref tool. It says, it asks, can a company gather 3PL warehouse data from its suppliers with the REF tool? Well, um, well we address the REF tool um, to operators of logistics sites. So what we what we have is that uh, companies actually ask their clients or their their 3PLs to to um, to use the tool and then provide the KPI they, they receive from the tool and um, so that the company can use um, the client's data um, elaborated by the REF tool. So this context we have, we, we, are, we will keep the database anonymized and uh, yeah, it's confidential data. We won't share that. Each company has its own database. And uh, but there, there are options that uh, we can yeah, moderate this process and support companies to, to receive the data. And um, yeah, I think this is a big uh, cooperation topic, definitely. And this needs to be in, uh, evolved in the, in the future. All right. Good. Then, Andrea, the floor is yours. Oh, yeah, thank you. No, I'm, I'm very happy to be today here. Hello to everybody because maybe Fernando remembers, but the first time I met uh, Kerstin and we started talking about uh, warehousing and uh, logistics site emissions, it was in a, during an Alice event. 
I think uh, in uh, I'm not not Amsterdam. It was a Ministry of Transport in Holland. Okay, that was very nice. Uh, so I'm happy to be again in a similar event today. And uh, I just want to stress what was very well discussed uh, described before. Um, this is a work in progress. So we have a lot of work to do, and I'm happy that so many people are here today because even there is a, a literature problem. So we are trying to fill the gaps and to give out data. You've seen already a lot of interesting KPIs, but uh, we are working on it. So as you can see in the next slide, of course, we are in the good evolution. So, I mean, we, we more than five times the initial hubs uh, number, but uh, uh, as you can see in the next click, uh, we want to go on. Okay, so the first uh, point I want to make today is we are not going to stop 2024. We are going to collect more data and the channels are basically two. Uh, one is, uh, of course, uh, ref tool and uh, what Kerstin and Jan Philippe are described very well. And the reason why we are doing this collaboration is also because in parallel, Polytechnic di Milan and then Sara will describe better, has in uh, over years, since, I mean, 12 years now, an observatory on contra logistics where we have a, run, a work table on real estate in logistics. And that parallel was fantastic when we discovered that we were working together. And this is a way to collect, of course, uh, data from a serious standpoint. We managed to standardize, but we also have the trust of the companies because they know that we treat data in a serious way. We elaborate in a certain way. Of course, the quality of data is the issue. And I think we have to work on it, but uh, is also a learning process for those that uh, collaborate with us. So uh, don't be scared if you don't have all the data, but uh, contact us and see what we can do. Uh, we really want to have uh, a global scale more and more. So that will allow for many things. And as you can see in the next slide, the extension is not only a matter of uh, you know, having an additional number of, 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 uh, of data and uh, totals. We want to have uh, you involved in order to have more interesting evolution also of the norms, but uh, at least you see here what the normative scope to the ISO. So we want to have uh, data on transshipment side, energy and refrigerator related emissions. And this is location based. Uh, which is one part. Of course, then you have market-based and you see already the, the, the difference, you know, from what is electricity and what's not. And then we can also have the optional one. So starting from what you've seen, emission per ton, emission per square meter, then we can work on the sources of emissions, sources of energy consumption. And so the uh, market-based emission factors, the self-generation on site, the different potential for uh, allocation also in terms of transparency, what you can do, what's the effect uh, of different action to build a roadmap. And so again, what could be side by side, because the difficult part for us will be to generalize, but at least we could be able to help you in driving the, the effort. And Sarah will talk about uh, some of the uh, most interesting topics, but the idea is to provide also a knowledge base. And then of course, uh, it could become even more complex. Someone I saw in the chat also talked about uh, the, the interconnection with the transport. But of course, the use of data will help also to have this data available. So GLEC is a fantastic example. They are published. Of course, they will be published, hopefully, and updated yearly. So we can improve our uh, evidence and give you more info. Uh, the publishing is also important to spread information and knowledge. And what is our experience as Green Router is also we see that this is one of the pieces of information you want when you start thinking of redesigning your network, redesigning your footprint in your supply chain. And of course, uh, it's very easy to see the parallel between energy, cost, CO2. I mean, and these three things have to be well think about, well thought about, but also planned in advance because it's not easy to change. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the equipment, the, 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 the design of a site, but you can work on the efficiency from year zero to the next three years and see what you can be, you can reach. Because even changing an energy mix is already relevant and it helps a lot in the final result in CO2. So there are many things uh, uh, that we can uh, give you back in support, out of the support you're providing us. So just to, to draw on the example that uh, Jan Philippe was making very good on the REF tool, uh, in our tool, Green Router, we have a similar approach, but why? Because we work on the nodes and arc approach. So when we define calculation, we want to know where the transport origin and destination are, but inside the node, you can qualify. 
And the key point is that also for Black, but in general, companies don't know what is the node impact. And so we can have default values, and these are going to be embedded clearly as a default value. Then eventually you can add on this, and you can see in the next uh, uh, screen, uh, basically, you can detail exactly what Kersti was saying. You have location-based, which is country-based, and so it is a national mix, but you can also work on the market-based. And then you can say also what are the sources. So if you are a green contract with your electricity provider, if you are self-producing with many forms, but then, of course, you buy certificates. And the reason is this is becoming more important. And again, we can provide energy mix composition based on the percentage you saw before, or like in the pie you see here in the pie chart, a personalized one. So the, the depth of the information is more and more relevant. And this depth is also very useful for you because you will learn how to make benchmark. And if you see the next click, <laughs> Kerstin, thank you. Uh, of course, the, the value of this research and of the future that is that data structure are possible to see relationship over time. Also, because we see in the observatory that Sarah can, can build on this. We saw the same data at the same place over time, but then we started to connect it also to solutions and the impact of those solutions. So these are the big value we see in this kind of study. So we need the, the GILA database to grow. We need to do it, of course, for comparison over years, but also for segmentation. Because Kerstin was saying very well, we have the opportunity to do it at the moment, but still it's a work in progress for some aspects. The more the database will grow, both geographically and vertically in the specific segments, the more we'll be able to provide more precise KPI to use as internal benchmark. We know that there are many big logistic players that are already doing internal benchmark on this subject, especially on energy consumption, but also it could be an external benchmark so that you could confront it with the external players. And of course, uh, quantity action, I mean, quantitative support is relevant when you want to uh, you know, demonstrate the relevance of your action to improve because you need to have priorities okay so all these things uh, match quite well together and uh, the reason is we are working in a consolidated way and uh, what i think uh, jan philippe and casting told very well we are at the forefront also of norms and guidelines meaning that we are aligned and so this way this way of proceeding is very much in line also with expectation from those that will eventually audit or certify the data Okay, so we are at the moment working really to make a solid process, not just a good calculation. Okay, so this is one point. Then just to show you what could be uh, an interesting detail. I mean, electricity consumption, you see, this is the scattering of our data. So logistical area could be huge and very small. And then we see the different uh, uh, values. So you see that ambient and chill and frozen are very scattered around, so apparently you don't see a lot of correlation, but uh, this could be improved. So this is the level where we can go. We can segment and then partially go into those. Uh, my personal opinion is that also in the observatory, we've been doing real estate uh, data analysis for years. Every year we are getting more and more solid uh, evidence, okay? Like uh, the average consumption, the average uh, emission, so on, they are consolidating. This is the same. We can work on segmentation by this kind of detail level. And hopefully you've seen the gaps in total sites, available data sites, which is still big, but uh, over the years we can feel. Even the same site can improve and give us maybe in 2024 more data of the same site. That would be fantastic. Now, what could be also a different perspective? And it could be also to validate what were the logical, uh, I would say, logistic, historically, uh, logistic impact assumption of what are the sites' contribution to con logistics emissions. You see here some uh, of the most known assumptions, so 13% from World Economic Forum, so saying 30% uh, emissions are uh, connected to buildings. Then there is a UK, US by McKinnon estimation in a big range, 11 to 20 percent. Then the 15 percent about uh, Rudiger and in Germany and so on. Of course, we can help on this. And so we are starting to think how uh, you will see uh, the table you've seen already about the, 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 the average per square meter values. Now we have an average, which may be not perfect, but still we have a reference, 25 kilos of CO2 equivalent per square meter. And in the next slide, you will see how we could use it. 
So of course, this is very draft, so don't take it for uh, uh, perfect. But this is the German example. On the left hand side, you see a 300 million square meters evaluation of what is the stock of logistics size. Of course, a, a real estate stock. Then if you multiply it by 25, you get more than 7 million CO2 tons. And then compare this to uh, transport is about 11%. Of course, this is a very good number compared to the number you've seen before. And is a bottom up number. So that could be very interesting to, to demonstrate also for specific sites and so on. And most important, in the next click, you will see also the correlation with the, where we can improve. So this 11%, 67% is electricity. We can work on the mix and we can have already a big success in the carbonizing. So, you know, all the pieces can get together. Uh, this is one example. We try to do the same in, for the Italian market. Now, the point is, we have different values. I mean, 60 million square meters looks small, but uh, the logistic market for real estate is really underdeveloped, even compared to the industrial size. And again, we get a different percentage. Uh, the 30 million tons for transport look too big in terms of uh, as the German value saw before, but Italy is long and stretched, so it's not uh, really uh, a surprise for us. Consider Milan to Sicily is equivalent to Milan to Copenhagen as a distance. So there is a transport density in Italy, which is different. But the 4.8% is a starting point. Consider also that uh, we could elaborate more by segmenting. Of course, transport uh, is very broad, but uh, as we said before, a different segment by temperature and so on could be even interesting. So these are the evidence we can build over time. And they will contribute uh, if, of course, we can do the same with many more countries in the group in the world. You saw already how many uh, buildings we have. We can, uh, in some way, validate the global assumptions bottom up, uh, which will be a very strong piece of literature and guidance also for companies. So this is, I would say, uh, my final slide, I guess, Kerstin, and then I have to handle to, to Sarah. Thank you for your attention.